from coast to coast, in every state in the Union, the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life. And now, here he is, the one, the only... That's me, Groucho Marx. Well, here I am again with $1,500 for one of our couples. Fenneman, who's first? Uh, what's the secret word tonight? Well, uh, suppose we ask the secret word, Bird. Shall we do that? Yes. Bird, come on down here. Oh, hi, boy. <laughs> it would think? seem tonight, Groucho, the secret word is room. And if anybody says room during our show, they will receive $100 immediately because the bird's going to fly down and give it to them. Okay, goodbye, Doc. We may see you later. <laughs> All right, Fenneman, who's face to try for the big question? Well, a greeting card writer and a man who sells gadgets, Groucho. They were selected by our studio audience just before they came. we came on the air. And here they are now, Mrs. Helen Ferries and Don L. Davis. I'd like you folks to meet Groucho Marx right over here. Please. Welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. And if you say the secret word, you'll divide $100 in cash. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. Mrs. Helen Farries. Farries? Farries, is that the way you pronounce it? Uh, Farries, isn't it? Farries. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're uh, Mr. Davis, I presume? Right? Yes, sir. Where, where are you from, Don? I was born in the shadow of the Heinz Pickle Factory in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Was your old man pickled at the time? Or? I wasn't there, sir. You weren't there? I you don't were think I was. <laughs> you wouldn't want to sit out front with the rest of the swimming. <laughs> oh, he's going to be fun. <laughs> uh, are you married, Don? Yes, sir. You notice he didn't laugh at that. Huh? <laughs> Any little gadgets at home? Yes, sir. Too cute, very... Too cute, too little cute, very... <laughs> too, too cute gadgets. <laughs> I, know, I know what you meant, Don. <laughs> you say it any way you want. And Mrs. Uh, Helen Farris, you're a greeting card writer. Is that right? Yes, sir. And, uh, who, do, who do you work for, uh, Helen? Uh, Buzz Cardozo. Oh, I've heard of that. That's, that's in Korea, isn't it? Uh... <laughs> no. Mr. Buzzer is the president, and Mr. Cardozo is chairman of the board. They're my bosses. I see. Mr. Buzzer buzzes Mr. Cardozo, and Mr. Cardozo buzzes you, huh? And then they, that's right. Sounds like a beehive. Huh? <laughs> uh, who, who do you work for, uh, Don? Gadget of the Month Club. The Gadget of the Month Club? Yes, sir. What, what's that? That's the only organization in the world to take an idea and guarantee to sell and deliver at least 100,000 units of your idea. Let me get this clear. If, uh, if I have any ideas, you can sell them? Yes, sir. Occasionally, I get a few ideas, but I doubt if you could sell them. Eh? In fact, you could be arrested just for thinking of them. Well, how do you make any money out of this racket, uh, club? Uh, um, you see, uh, we uh, are the only organization in the world that people buy things sight unseen and pay for them in advance. That proves that they love new things so well. They don't even know what they're getting? No, sir, because it's a delightful surprise of getting these packages when the mailman delivers them. Well, uh, for example, what do you consider a delightful surprise? Uh, well, one That's of our... That's a reasonable question, I think. <laughs> well, one of our very delightful and successful gadgets is a gadget known as Kitchen Doozy. That's what you consider a delightful surprise? <laughs> you stick to your surprises and I'll stick to mine. <laughs> kitchen doozy, what, what is a kitchen doozy? A uh, kitchen doozy is the first new idea in tea kettles in 100 years. What are some of your other gadgets? Uh, <laughs> have you got one for cocoa? <laughs> There's a, a one called the ribbon writer. And that's a... Take your clothes off, let's be comfortable. Uh, the ribbon writer, that was a special... Take your coat off, you? No, leave it on. <laughs> There's a... The gadget was called a ribbon writer. I got this from a Girl Scout. Yeah. <laughs> you got a gadget that's a ribbon writer? Yes, sir, and the, it's a secretary's delight because it permits her to make two carbons, three carbon copies of, uh, of correspondence without the use of carbon paper. Is that good? Yes, sir. Did uh, you bring any of your gadgets yeah, with you? I have a couple. Uh, here's one, for example. You, most men like to have their 
pocket handkerchief very flary instead of just sticking in. Well, oh, I wouldn't consider it any other way. Huh? Well, most men have a, a great... man without a flared handkerchief is nothing in my world. <laughs> a man, uh, it's quite difficult. So some perfume salesman became. I thought he was going to pull a pair of bloomers out of it. <laughs> I used to have those and water squirted out. <laughs> The perfume salesman got very disgusted and said there ought to be a better way to do it because invention is man's rebellion against stupidity, doing things the hard way. So yeah, he don't had, look at me. So he had this little uns insignificant looking piece of metal. You take a handkerchief, go like that, pull it through, and in seven seconds, Mr. Marks, you have your uh, <laughs> pocket That's handkerchief all flared. And, uh, I'd like to have one of those, sir. Uh, you would? Yeah. Well, as a memento of my being on, on your show, here, you may have that. I, if you want to, I'll get one made on both. What about the for handkerchief? You. you want my handkerchief, too, sir? <laughs> Let's see if I can do it, huh? Uh, now, uh, is this right? Yes, sir. Just pull it through. See? How's that? Very easy. Well, lend me your coat, will you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I got red suspenders on. <laughs> You may have something there at that. I have a special. What are you doing kit. with your trousers there? Well, no, I can't get it up. I may leave you with a whole new suit. <laughs> well, let's talk about your job, Mrs. Farris. How many greeting cards do you write in a year? Oh. About 100 to 200 a week. What qualifications are necessary to be a greeting card writer? Well, I think the main thing is to be able to rhyme. After all, most of them, most of them you do You have to rhyme. be able to rhyme? Mm-hmm. You know, words with another, yet make them mean something. I didn't something. know that was a requisite. I'll give you a line, and you make it into a poem. Well, let's see. Uh, I, I, I had a date with Sadie uh, Dunaweather. <laughs> Try that on your harpsichord. <laughs> Did you say Dunaweather? Dunawetter. I had a date with Sadie, Sadie Dunawetter. Stuck. Ever since that night, I couldn't forget her. I think that's wonderful. You don't know the phone number of Sadie Dunawetter, do you? <laughs> now, what seasonal cards are you writing now? Valentine's Day, 1952. 52? Yes, sir. What happened to 51? <laughs> We're all through. Why, do you, why did you skip a year? We don't. We work a year and a half in advance. Oh, you're all through with 51, eh? Yes, sir. Tell me, who, who won the White Sears next year, you know? <laughs> or the Yankees, probably. <laughs> don't bother to answer that. I know it was the Yankees, eh? <laughs> now, in just one minute, you're going to play your bet your life for a chance at $1,500. All right, here we go. Now, let's see if you two will get a chance at the $1,500. Fenneman? Explain the rules in your uh, one-syllable words. All right. <laughs> each of our three couples has $20. They bet as much of that 20 as they want on each of four questions. And the couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the $1,500 DeSoto Plymouth question in the, later on in the show. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected holidays and special days. Here's your first question. How much of the 20 will you try? What do you want? Ten. 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 Mm -hmm. What holiday falls on February 22nd? Washington's birthday. Washington's birthday is... <laughs> well, you're on your way, folks. You have $30. I don't know how they ever figured that out. <laughs> how much of the 30 are you going to risk on this? 20. 20. 20. What special day falls on the third Sunday in June? Father's Day. Father's Day is right. <laughs> now you're climbing now. You have $50. Today, Father is Father's Day, and we're giving you a tie. Forty-five, she said. Don't you want to hear my song? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's not much you know, it is just our way of showing you we think you're a regular guy. Uh, Please. <laughs> <laughs> you say it was nice of us to bother, but it really was a pleasure to fuss. For according to our mother, you're our father. <laughs> That's good enough. <laughs> now, here's your third question. Uh, how much have they got? They have $50 you now. Got $50. How much are you going to bet on this? 40. 45 45 What holiday falls on the 17th of March? 
St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick's Day! You have $95. Sure, and you're climbing a day, you got $95. Now, how much you going to bet on this one? $90. Hurry up before I sing again. Huh? $90. <laughs> you're going to bet $90. Here's your last chance to be the other couples. You're going to bet $90. What day is on, is on the second Sunday in May? Mother's Day. Mother's Day, Mother's day is right. <laughs> and you'll wind up with a grand total of $185. Thanks, and good luck. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Groucho, the secret word is still room. I know that, George. Uh, just before we went on the air, we selected a housewife from the studio audience, Mrs. Jean Dickman. Her partner is Mr. Willie DeMond, who is a hosiery designer, and here they are. Folks, come on in here and meet Groucho Marx. Oh, welcome to You Bet Your Life. <laughs> and if you say the secret word, you'll divide $100 in cash. It's a common word, something you always find around the house, usually or frequently. <laughs> and that's good enough. <laughs> You're a hosiery designer, eh? That's right. Well, well, this ought to be fun, eh? Well, who do you work for, Mr. DeMond? Well, I'm associated with Sanson Hosier Mills, manufacturer of picturesque stockings, but I have my own mill, and I'm better known as Willies of Hollywood. Well, I know a lot of people in Hollywood who have the willies, huh? <laughs> Mrs. Uh, Jean uh, Dickerman, you're a housewife? That's right. And a very, very pretty one, too. I never had a housewife like that. <laughs> Frankly, I, I like your design better than Willie's. Uh. <laughs> and what, what do you do in your job, uh, Willie? Oh, I have designer women's legs, and I uh, create stockings and look for the unusual things in hosiery. <laughs> You look for the unusual things in hosiery? Willie, why don't you just let well enough alone? <laughs> now, uh, uh, Jean, uh, are you interested in all this talk about stockings? Oh, of course, all women are. Every man is, too. <laughs> now, as a typical housewife, oh, no, how I wish you were typical. <laughs> when you're in a department store shopping for stockings, uh, what's the first thing you look for? Well, the right color. Right, right color? Mm -hmm. is, is that the proper procedure? No, we usually look for a good fit. Well, she doesn't have to worry. <laughs> I'm sure when her husband sees the bill, he'll throw a fit. Eh? <laughs> now, Willie, how does a woman know if she's got the right fit? Oh, by uh, getting the right measurements and uh, seeing up the right size. And mm -hmm. Well, how would you measure me, for example, for stockings? Go ahead. Uh, what are the points to look for? Well, you look for... She was... <laughs> You look for a good ankle, and you look for a nice calf. Have you got a tape measure on you? Oh, I always carry a tape measure with you me. Do? That's my business, measuring legs. Well, why are you wasting time on mine, uh, Willie? Uh, <laughs> why don't you measure uh, jeans over here? I have the pleasure of measuring your legs, Miss Dickman. <laughs> Jean, it's no worse than being in a bathing beach. <laughs> <laughs> Display one of your games, just here. This is really a sign. Do you mind lifting your skirts up? How high? Oh, just a couple of knees. <laughs> I have some very interesting facts here. Did you know that the Amazon River flows 1,500 miles? <laughs> and that's good. Did you know that California raises more cotton than it does dried pomegranate? <laughs> The highest lake in South America is Lake Tichahochi. <laughs> hey, Willie, what's the matter with this? This isn't good enough. <laughs> That's an, I think we all got the idea there. You did a fine job. Funny, nobody was looking at me, eh? <laughs> Including me. <laughs> now, let's see how you make out in the battle for the $1,500. You've got to run your $20 into more than our other couples. Fenneman's off stage to remind our listeners how much the first couple won. The greeting card writer and the man who sells gadgets won $185. All right, here we go. Let's see how high I can build your $20. You selected movie hits of the past. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? $10. How much are you going to bet? Ten dollars. Ten dollars, okay. Who played Rhett Butler in Gone with the Wind? Clark Gable. Clark Gable. Clark Gable is right! <laughs> and on the way, Groucho, they have thirty dollars. They got thirty dollars. Remember, you're going for fifteen hundred dollars tonight. Now, how much of your thirty will you bet on your second question? Twenty-five dollars. Who played the Portuguese fisherman in Captain's Courageous? 
Take a stab at it if you don't know. Talk it over, kids. Oh, wait. Oh, who was in Captain Francis? Um... Well, I, I, I'm sorry. It's, it's Spencer Tracy. Oh. oh Should have known that, although it's quite some time ago. And they've dropped to $5 now, Groucho. Well, uh, that's a shame. I'm sorry. Here's your third question. You're going to bet the five, I presume, huh? Why don't you bet 480? <laughs> oh, this board. Keep something for your fourth question. All right. 450. Four, four, how much have you got? Four dollars? Five. Oh, five. you got five. Okay, well, that's pretty good. Who played the title role of Little Miss Marker? Shirley Temple. Shirley Temple. Well, we're on the way again, Doctor. They now have 950. You got 950. 50 yes. cents more, you can get three pairs of stockings. Here's your last <laughs> chance to be the other couples. How much of the 950? Oh, 950, why not at all? Nothing to lose. Last this is the, the last. This is the This is it, kids. Who played Captain Bly in Mutiny on the Bounty? Um. Uh, oh, it over now. You'll remind oh, what's you his name? Um, oh. Yeah, but. Lawton. 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 And they wind up with 19 dollars. Well, you wound up with 19 dollars. Oh. Good luck, and have a sort of fun with Thank you very much. Uh, Groucho, the secret word is still room. Still room. I know uh, that. I saw the duck. <laughs> we asked if there were any high school students here tonight, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Sandra Bazrod and Phil Lamar, and here they are. Folks, come on in here and meet Groucho Marx. <laughs> Welcome, youngsters, I'm supposed to say, for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And if you say the secret word, you'll divide $100 between you. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. Sandra Bazrod and Phil Lamar. Huh? Right. A couple of high school students, eh? Uh, how old are you, Phil? Uh, 16. 16? <laughs> yes. You're a big boy for 16. That's a good age for a high school boy. <laughs> well, what is your age, Sandra? 17. 17. That's a good age for a girl, huh? whether she's in high school or not. <laughs> At what school do you take your siestas, Phil? L.A. High School. You go to the same school, uh, Sandra? Oh, no, I go to a good school. <laughs> well, there's a woman for you. Everything's quiet and serene, and she's itching for battle. <laughs> Where do you go, Sandra? Fairfax. Why do you think your school is better than L.A. High? Well, uh, Ricardo Montalban graduated from Fairfax. He did? Yes. Well, then there's, there's no question which is the right. <laughs> Ridiculous to even discuss it. Don't you? <laughs> now, uh, how do modern schools operate, uh, Sandra? For example, give us a brief outline of uh, an average day. Well, I start off the morning first period, and I go to advanced composition, and then French, and then we have a 20-minute break for nutrition. And then I go to civics class and... What do you mean, nutrition? They give you... <laughs> do they feed you intravenously? Or? Well, <laughs> no, but it's supposed to tide you through the rest of the day. Right. What time is that? That's about uh, 10.20. Oh, and then you eat around 10.20, and then what happens? Well, and then I go to civics class and costume designing class, and lunch period comes in. And then I go to drama class and gym class. And every once in a while, we go to our homerooms and fill out. Well, Ducky, they're keeping you mighty busy here tonight. <laughs> you said the secret uh, word, room, and you uh, and Phil here will split a uh, hundred dollars between you. Eh? <laughs> I don't, oh, don't I'll try take to solve that <laughs> away. <laughs> I think you ought to let the woman I handle the money, so. eh? <laughs> not yet. I'm not married. Well, I know, but it's just a question of a few minutes now, eh? Now, Phil, now, are you interested in any extra uh, curricular activities in school, such as spin the bottle? Yes, I'm going out for cross country at L.A. You mean you run from here to New York? And... <laughs> You're not the super chief, are you? <laughs> what is your special interest in school, Sandra? Well, dramatics, I think. Dramatics. Yeah. I thought every high school student was dramatic, especially when they're explaining their report card to their parents. <laughs> now, Mom, I'd have had a good... But the teacher just doesn't like me, that's all. <laughs> Phil, what is your ambition after you graduate from school? I would like to be a comedian. <laughs> that is...
just known as the thrust mortal. <laughs> well, you have a good start. You, uh, you already have this show. <laughs> Why would you like to be a comedian? Several reasons, I guess. Well, I'll settle for one. <laughs> this made us several reasons happy. Uh. <laughs> Well, it's, it's a lot of fun to see the people in the audience laugh and have a gay time. And There's always room for a good comedian, That's but not right. on the same program with me. <laughs> well, to be a comedian, you, uh, you've got to have some jokes, Phil. Well, I have jokes. You, you, <laughs> you have jokes? Yes. <laughs> you mean I have a choice? <laughs> what category would you like? Boy, am I glad I got that annuity, huh? <laughs> You pick your own category, huh? <laughs> Go ahead. Huh? Well, uh, I'll tell you the one about the time I went hunting. I once shot an elephant in my pajamas. How he ever got in them, I'll never know. That's a good joke, all right. Uh, is, uh, is that uh, your own joke? No. It's one of yours. <laughs> That's right. Once I shot an elephant in my pajamas. How he got in my pajamas, I'll never know. That's some animal crackers, huh? Yes. Yeah. Then we try to remove the tusks. That goes on from there. <laughs> We couldn't, we, they're very tough, the tusks in Africa. Of course, in, in Alabama, the Tuscaloosa. <laughs> I will now be sued by Kaufman and Riskin. <laughs> well, I, I, I've learned a lot from you two kids here tonight, and saved me more than I ever learned in school. And now you're gonna play your bet your life. You beat our other two couples, you'll get a chance at the $1,500 DeSoto Plymouth question. Can't tell you how much our other couples won, but Fenneman is off stage to remind our listeners. The greeting card writer and the man who sells gadgets are still ahead with $185. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. Now, you selected slogans. Here's your first question. How much of the 20 will you try? Ten. Ten? Ten. Right. You don't consult with Phil here at all, huh? Well, I... Let's get together. <laughs> <laughs> Ten's okay, that's fine. Pretty sharp, Phil, eh? <laughs> what product uses the slogan, the pause that refreshes? Uh, Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola! <laughs> and you kids are on your way, you have $30. You got $30. Remember, you're going for $1,500 tonight. Now, how much of the $30 will you bet on your second question? <laughs> Don't think I can't make it exciting, eh? <laughs> <laughs> We've decided on 25. You've decided on 20. Well, what product uses the slogan, the candy with a hole in the middle? I know. Uh, Lifesavers. 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 You're really climbing to have $55. You have $55, and here's your third question. How much of the 55? 50. 50. What product uses the slogan, when it rains, it pours? Morton Salt. Morton Salt. $105. You know, $105. Here's your last chance to be the other couples. How much will you bet? All of it, I guess. All of it? <laughs> That's the time to gamble when you're 17 and 16. <laughs> what product uses the slogan, the beer that made Milwaukee famous? Schlitz. Schlitz is it? And you wind up. Schlitz is absolutely high. <laughs> uh, I don't wind up with a case of Pabst Blue and Heaven for Zane. <laughs> they do wind up with $210. Anybody can wind up at $210. But that means that they get the chance with their $210. They get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth Big Question. Well, now, in just a minute, you two are going to have a chance to win $1,500. Groucho, here's our winning couple, the high school kids, all set for the $1,500 DeSoto Plymouth question. Here we go for $1,500. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you. Think carefully and no help from the audience. Here it is. One of our states touches the boundaries of eight other states. 
It originally was known as the state of Franklin. What state is this? Talk it over, you got 15 seconds. Pennsylvania. Is that the answer no. you took? We haven't arrived at it. There? Well, you have to, there's the bell is rung, yeah? Oh. The correct answer is Tennessee. So that means uh, the big question next week will be worth $2,000. Well, you lost the big money, but you won how much? $210 right. for the quiz? Congratulations and thanks to both of you and to all of our contestants on the show today. Be sure to tune in next week at the same time for the Groucho Marx Show, You Bet Your Life, on television presented by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America. Don't miss You Bet Your Life on radio every Wednesday night. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. Friends, go in to see a DeSoto Plymouth dealer tomorrow. And when you do, tell them that Groucho sent you. This is George Fenneman with a reminder from the National Safety Council. Drive slow in rain, sleet, or snow.